All right, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about Custis. It's a lightweight, privacy-friendly alternative to Discuss, and it's built by Randy. Um, I stumbled upon this yesterday. It's gotten already a lot of traction, and it's a super nice uh, implementation of you know, these common threads at the bottom of blog posts, static pages, basically, you know, comments with replies that you don't have to build yourself, but you can, you know, host from third-party services such as Discuss. Um, but as with Discuss, you need to log in. You know, it's a company that's hosted, hosts this, so you don't know where your data ends up with, and you have really no, no really options to, to customize it. And Custis is open source, MIT licensed, and yeah, so you can just implement it, play around with it, change it the way you want it. And Randy also added a very nice, I mean, here are the pros and cons that he mentioned. Of course, there's no spam filtering. I mean, he just pushed it. Um, but there are, you know, he, he did build a roadmap already. Uh, there's a couple of things that he wants to implement. You know, I think this uh, new common web hooks are quite good. Um, also adding more OAuth providers. Currently, the login is not required and he actually hosts this on his own page. So this is just a XJS page um, rendered for this project. And at the bottom of these, he actually added um, his own Custis implementation. So what this does is, you know, I can just say, Mark, add my email, and then hit my reply. And actually, it's not immediately posted, but there is sort of this moderator gateway. So as you can see in the in the features, he has this moderation dashboard where you as a moderator, if you host it on your website, for example, you basically see all the comments that are posted and then you can approve them or reject them. And then they're pushed to your website as well. And you can reply from this moderation dashboard right away. He also added imports for Discuss. That's kind of cool. Um, I actually didn't use Discuss on any of my pages yet. Um, but super excited to trying this out. Well, I want to dive in a bit on the code. So he's using Prisma and he actually has two implementations here for the database, uh, SQLite implementation, you know, which stores the, um, your models um, on disk. And it's kind of great. Of course, you know, if, you know, for some reason that should go down, um, then all this, <laughs> um, all your models, all your comments, everything is gone. So, but um, for migrations um, to host it on, on Vercel, for example, or on any other uh, server, he added also a Postgres implementation. So the SQLite uh, implementation database is mainly, if you know, for local storage development, uh, on local machine development, sorry. And yeah, so he's got, he's got accounts, I guess accounts are basically who, who are the moderators and who's logged in with, um, we have different sessions, we have users. So users are presumably these people who post, uh, comments, correct. Um, they're associated. We have different projects and we have different pages. So projects are, you know, I have my personal website, for example, and I have my company website and I want to implement it on both websites, but I just want to have one moderation dashboard. So that's what I would use projects for. Um, and it's very simple. Uh, it's just you know, add a, a new title and you spin up a new project. Uh, for pages, that's actually pages are like URLs within your 
project. Um, and then comments is quite self-explanatory. Here you can approve them or reject them. You can reply to them. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's nicely done with Prisma. Um, one of the first things I look at is sort of the package JSON because it tells me a lot about the application and you know what's going on here. Um, so he he's built a lot of you know scripts here uh, to do deploys, you know, to various kinds of database schemas. Um, we also have Prisma Studio, it's kind of nice. Um, and we have this widget development, uh, which is running on Vite. I guess it's called Vite. Um, and he actually built it with uh, Svelte. So let's jump into the widget component. So here we have, you know, comments and replies. That's, you know, like you would expect from a Svelte project um you know it's got the syntax and everything it's quite nice but nothing too exciting um here it's just you know where it renders out the component out to um, so it's looking for this custis id in the dom and what do we have here right um so this is just the implementation and we'll see this pop up actually Later on again, um, we can run this, of course, locally, but um, this is exactly the script that we want to embed in our static page or on our website, wherever we want to use this custis. And um, this will be rendered out by the hosted service as well. Cool. So there is a Docker implementation. And I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of Docker. <laughs> um, it's nice for spinning up quick development, but in production, I want to have more uh, control over my application. Um, it's got these like server and client util functions. I guess there will be a refactor coming up to make those, you know, put those in a in a different directory to make them a bit more legible. Um, for now, I think it's fine. Um, and like I said, all the other part of the application is built with um, is built with uh, Next.js. So getting getting comments and stuff like that. Um, yeah, right. So I want to implement this, basically host this and implement it on a website. Cool. So I actually forked this already. Um, I'm just gonna grab the SSH code, um, jump over to my terminal, and uh, clone this in here. And we can just look at the source code again in a nice overview. I do want to. I'm just going to run this from here. I do want to install all the stuff. So I'm just going to hit yarn. And while that's loading, let's have a look at the documentation. Sorry. Let's look at the documentation. All right. The documentation for self hosted follow the installation guide. Okay. It's not found. Well, let's look at Vercel down here. Um, in the end, in the end, we're going to host it on Vercel. For that, we need a Postgres uh, DB. But actually, I want to check the installation guide. It should be somewhere here now. Self hosted. What's the URL here? Self host installation. Doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist anymore. Or it's gone or it's changed the URL. Let's check out. Uh, it's right here under public and then doc and then self host. And then you have Docker and Vercel. Okay, so 
he's only got these two now. I guess it's not so hard. Okay, this build, what we want to do is we're just going to run uh, yarn dev. Um, this will run npm run dev general. This will run deploy and generate. Um, so generate will actually do our Prisma stuff. Uh, before that, I remember we need to actually, and this is not anywhere described. That's very strange. Um, of course, we need to add our, let me go to Docker. So we need our, our environment variables. So we need these four environment and variable variables. Um, let's, let's just copy this here. Super lazy. And would probably be easier to uh, file uh, SQL light. Let's see if this works like that. And then we need a username and a password. Let's do this and this. And this is a JV secret. Of course, you should not use this as a secret when you're running in production. Um, but for now, we're going to store this in a SQLite form. I think this should work. Um, let's see where he's storing it. Oh, OK, he's storing it in data DB SQLite. OK, let's just call it this. It's, it will actually store it in a file here. Um, but this we can just run. Hopefully, it will execute properly. So it's doing now the Prisma migrations. That worked. It's loading the environment variables. That also worked. And we're live. So this is nothing too crazy right now. Um, we're just basically spinning up the same website that he, he's got going. Right, I need the next auth variable. Um, if I do actually want to go to the dashboard and sign in. Um, but this is basically, you know, nothing, nothing crazy right now. Um, nothing too, too crazy. We've got still the same, the hosted Custis um, project right here, but it's actually the one that's hosted by Custis.com. So you see data host. Um, that's actually the one from from Randy himself that he hosted on his page. Um, we obviously don't want to use his, we want to host it ourselves. So right now we've you know only spun up this, but what we can also do is we can run, I just open the second terminal here. Um, we can run yarn widget, and this will run yarn uh, byte, on a local host 3001 and this is now our local implementation um, if we can see we don't have a no, our data host is now local host 3000 uh, no longer custards and everything that we would write here it would actually um, arrive in our in our dashboard here so if i open he hard coded the uh, URL on top, but if I open dashboard, it would probably redirect me to a login page right now. That's right. And username didn't it didn't work. Either my keyboard is broken. Yeah, my keyboard was broken. Um, and that's the um, that's the backend dashboard. So local host i can create this website and then here i see basically the script the same script that i just mentioned before where we have a div where our um, 
our comments and replies are rendered into. And I can, it's specifying the data host and the data app ID. And we can then specify here our page ID URL and, and title to differentiate the different uh, pages within our project. And this is basically just the, the asynchronous JavaScript that's rendering all the functionality here. Um, but I'll show you guys how this all works when it's hosted. All right, so let me tear this down. Um, I don't need this right now. I can close this, I will close this. What's quite nice is because he's he's added this like Vercel uh, deploy button, we're just gonna click it. Um, we're just gonna call it Custis, continue, and we're gonna connect GitHub, Custis. Hopefully this repo already exists. Already exists, right. Uh, Let's just create a new repo for our sake. Uh, project name. Now, what we need here is a database URL, and we cannot use SQLite on on Vercel yet. Um, I just recently heard of Lightstream um, that's doing basically replicas for SQLite. Um, different video, different topic, but I think that's super exciting, and I, I hope that. You know the guys at Vercel are, are taking a look at Lightstream and and seeing how we can you know push SQLite databases to the edge actually, and then you would not only have you know static pages at the edge, but you would also have your whole data store at the edge, and, and that's kind of cool. Then you would have you know because every time you know you need to read from the database or write to the database, it basically has to you know go to one central location. So. If you could have those at the edge, you would, you know, shave off, shave off those milliseconds and just have probably the fastest application ever. Um, but different video. So what we need is uh, Postgres uh, database, and of course I'm super lazy and just gonna go with Railway. Um, I'm not paid by Railway. Um, I just love that they're, you know, so intuitive. So easy to use. Um, right now, we're not doing any local development. I'm not gonna run this. I mean, they have this whole deployment setup that also deploys to Vercel. Since I've already got uh, Vercel connected, all I need is actually my variables. Um, I'm just gonna copy. I'm just gonna copy the database URL. I mean, that's the that's the URL that I want. Um, it starts with Postgres QL dot dot. I'm just going to copy that in here. And I'm just going to pick a random secret. It's a super secret token. Right. Cool. Um, later on, once it's deployed, we actually need to add a next auth URL. Um, but right now, let's just do, let Vercel do what they do and deploy our project. So I, I did have, to, I did create, you know, a new, new, um, get project for this, even though I already forked it. I guess I could have done it straight from, from GitHub. It would be cool if Vercel would actually recognize that I've already forked this repo and, you know, it isn't even has the same name and wouldn't ask me to create a new repo. I'm sure there's going to be a way in the GitHub API to figure this out. Um, just a small hint, if anyone from Vercel is watching, uh, this would be a great addition um, in terms of user experience. So, yeah, so this is deploying it. I think it takes around two minutes to deploy. Um, it's, you know, running all the, the build scripts. It will um, generate our database in Railway, actually, or push it in Railway. Don't be alarmed of this error right here, um, because right now, right here, we're actually running uh, the db generate command, which then generates the, the schema 
on our Postgres database from Prisma. So don't be alarmed by this error right now. Um, I guess Prisma is trying to execute this before um, before this command actually runs. Yeah, so you know, we're still doing what we're still needs to do. Meanwhile, we can just browse this project a bit more. Um, so I said it's MIT licensed. Um, there's a nice contributing guide, right? This is what I was looking for. Um, so that's the environment variables that you need. Um, yeah, this is what I was looking for. It's strange that I didn't see it before. And yeah, I mean, you can also use railway. Um, if you don't want to use a SQLite database locally for local development, you can also connect your uh, railway application or railway database for local development. That's no problem at all. Um, we've successfully deployed, so we've got our done. Now we're creating all the functions and uploading the outputs and actually just rendering the project and deploying it. Uh, but all the build scripts have completed successfully. That's great. Okay, so I've got my, my Postgres set up here. I've already got all my tables inside. There's, there are, of course, there might be one user. Not yet. Let's check. There's nothing in here yet. Um, that's understandable. But before we, we open the page, what we want to do is actually add this First, I want to grab this, Custis. It's interesting that I can get this Custis ver .vercel app, even though I'm not the original owner of the core repo. Also interesting. Anyway, I just grabbed my deployment uh, URL and add this next auth URL in here oh, and the copy and paste doesn't work. That's just frustrating. Uh, so if I want to copy the URL, maybe I can just do provided by system or sell URL. Huh. This is much smarter. Nice. And next off URL, I save that automatically expose system variables. So we've got all our other variables like our database, uh, JSON web token secret, and so on. Now I deploy this. Oh, this video is going to be long. Sorry about that. Uh, let's visit this page. Cool. I mean, exactly what we're expecting. Let's hit try this. Uh, it's rendering the sign in page. Sign in with username. For some reason, there's always an issue the first time around. I don't know. It's probably checking the CRFT token, but it's also redirecting myself to this URL. But I ended up here. Need to investigate this afterwards. So, Let's let's call this all in army. Um, I could actually just write a domain as well. So there's no comments here, obviously. I'm just gonna copy the script. And I've so this is my Custis project. I've got another project right here. Um, I'm going into the doc like underscore document JS file because. This is basically rendering in the, this should not be rendered inside the Next.js, um, what do you call it? Static site generation script. I want this just to render on the page itself uh, because it's, you know, being dynamically loaded in. I don't need 
there to be any fancy uh, static site generation. Normally, I would just add this on my HTML, like index.html in the public file. Here, I don't have it. Um, so the document.js will do. It's not going to be rendered nicely. I mean, I've not done any styling here yet, which you could obviously do. I added uh, the script in the head header tag or in a head tag. Um, and yeah, I added this below on my, my main body. So if you've never seen this like underscore document uh, dot JS and what is do other than, you know, your underscore app dot JS file, uh, definitely head over to the next JS docs. Uh, they explain it really well. Um, and also, you know, Lee Rob, he also does, you know, a great job explaining this, showing this in his page. And um, this will be very easy. So I'm not deploying this yet. Um, again, I typed Rails. I'm just going to run this locally um, because, you know, it, it, it proves my point. If I'm just running locally here, you know, it will run also on, on um online so i'm just gonna run this and in the meantime we have our you know versal hosted application open um, we still have no comments obviously and we're live so i mean this is just you know a fun little page for all in podcast fans i never shared this with anyone actually What's strange is, you know, because it's rendering in the document, you actually don't see the cursor. Um, so it's not ideal right now, but it does the job. Um, it's all hidden, actually. Hello from Castells. So it's actually in here. It's just, you know, white text on white background, so you don't see it. I'm just going to post this. And... For those that can't read it, it says, hey, your comment has been sent. Please wait for approval. So that's from the user perspective. Now I'm going in as the admin, and I will reload this page. And I will see, you know, I didn't, I didn't set the page ID, of course. If I had set the page ID, which I should have done, then I would actually see, you know, this is the page ID. But I can see hello from Costas. I can approve this and it will switch the, the tag to approval. Um, thank you for commenting. And, and a warm welcome. And I can reply from right in here. Again, I can see that this is the moderator. And if I refresh this page, I also see my two comments here. Um, so again, you know, there's something with the styling that's a bit off. You know, the the, the name, for example, is white on white, whereas the body is is you know black text. But you you get what I mean. Now I can just push this to Vercel and have the comments live. And yeah, I mean that's it's a really great project. We can we can check the insights real quick. How, how much, you know, Randy actually contributed here. You know, there's already a lot of people pushing, pushing PRs. Um, Randy built this, you know, in, in the last week, basically. Uh, so that's super exciting. And yeah, congrats to Randy. It's, a, it's an awesome project. I hope it, you know, gets the praise it deserves. I hope you're going to get more stars and actually more, uh, PRs and, you know, can complete your your project roadmap. And thanks so much for building this. And to everyone else, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I kept it under 30 minutes. Sorry for that. Next time will be much faster. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a great day.